Thank you. Um, welcome to the school board meeting for Thursday, May 16th. Can you tell me attendance? Mrs. Bergen? Here. Mrs. Giftos? Here. Mrs. Glidden? Here. Mr. Gill? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Sider? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Mrs. Ms. Caldwell? Can you please join me for, to, for the Pledge of Allegiance? It's easy for me to say. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, are there any adjustments to tonight's agenda? There are none. Great. 5.0, public comment on the agenda items. If you have any comments, please go to the podium. Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close that. 6.0, recognition. Yes, tonight we have one really fun recognition. Uh, we have lots of students here joining us tonight along with uh, Mr. Patrick Volker. This is the high school chorus, um, Scarborough High School chorus, and recently they attended a uh, the main ACDA adjudicated choral festival. Uh, I believe this is the first time that Scarborough has ever it's participated. The first festival. First festival. Um, and we are so super proud of them because even though this was their first time, they worked really, really hard to pull this together. And um, Mr. Volker could tell you more when he steps up to the podium there to talk about it. But they earned a superior rating with distinction. And we should note that this is the very possible highest rating an ensemble can obtain at a musical performance assessment. And so um, I've been wanting to share this treasure with you of our Scarborough High School chorus for a couple of weeks now. And finally, we were able to have them come. And I'm so excited to see how many faces are here and want to invite Patrick to say a few words, if you will. And then um, I believe we'll have a little performance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this festival we were invited to in January, and the, the task at hand is to prepare 15 minutes of music um, and then be assessed by three judges. Um, the judges were Dennis Cox from University of Maine, he taught chorus at University of Maine for 35 years, uh, Maria Belva, who works at the Portland Conservatory, and Nate Menafield, who works for the Maine Department of Education. Um, we prepared three songs in three different languages uh, and performed them by memory. Uh, with some choreography and, and some added percussion, and uh, the judges responded really positively to that. Um, the academic part of that festival, on top of the entertainment part of the, of the performance, is as soon as you're done with that, you walk down the hall of Hampton Academy, and um, at your seat, uh, at everybody's seat is a manila envelope, and you open it, and it's a new piece of music that you have two minutes to learn. So that's what we've been practicing for most of the third quarter, is um, taking apart those music literacy skills, um, which is a very, very important part of becoming a lifelong musician. So um, yeah, ourselves and two other schools out of the 10 that performed received Superior with Distinction, and I, I couldn't be more proud of these kids. They're very, very special. Um, if you would like to see more than just one song, you can come on Sunday at the West Scarborough United Methodist Church at 5. We'll be singing this Sunday, and then on Thursday, we have our special Senior Night concert on May 23rd at 7 uh, with um, Middle School Chorus and the a cappella group and this group you see in front of you, uh, including a special tribute for our senior set. I'm, I'm so proud of this year. Mm -hmm. So we'll take just a couple seconds to get... This is a sort of a strange room to sing in, so <laughs> give me 15 seconds and we'll figure this out. Uh, we'll, we'll sing one of our contest pieces, Three South African Songs. You can move those chairs. <laughs> Hey, 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 cool. 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 Hey, hey, hey
Is that right? How did you learn this? How did you learn all these words? Oh, I was supposed to say, um, uh, we actually brought someone from South Africa to so oh, come and, awesome. and speak to us. Um, I had Thank the you. opportunity, uh, a colleague of mine said, we were hosting this woman from South Africa who works in choirs. Is there anything she could help you with? And this was literally like the third day that I had given that song to them. I thought, yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> she taught us a lot of the choreography and helped us with something. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. That, was that was so good. Awesome. Thank, Thank you really so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. How can policy Bye, stand up to that? Yeah, you guys. <laughs> 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 boring now. <laughs> yeah.
yeah. for me. <laughs> Congratulations again, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> We need more of that. <laughs> um, yeah, that was beyond impressive. Um, and I do apologize because this is so not going to be anywhere near that entertaining. <laughs> um, exciting, but not entertaining. Um, tonight is 7.1, the second reading of our graduation requirements policy IKF. Um, pretty excited about this coming through. Um, we created a policy that values local control and allows Scarborough to continue to provide a strong academic high school program, which includes multiple pathways and opportunities for all students. Um, this was sent out to the entire board. It's been posted online. Hope everyone has had a chance to read it. Is there any discussion, or is there a move to accept the second reading of the policy, IKF for our graduation requirements? So moved. Second. Any discussion? OK, this is great. All those in favor? And it's unanimous. Okay, 7.2. It's the second reading of our students with diagnosed allergies and sensitivities, policy JLCEA. Um, and this is a policy that provides a foundation for the strong protocols that were written to support our students with allergies and sensitivities. Again, this was posted. It has been sent to um, all members of the board. Can I have a motion to accept the second reading of policy JLCEA? Students with diagnosed allergies and sensitivities. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Again, unanimous. And 7.3, with the inclusion of policy JLCEA, we're requesting to remove policies JLCE, which is our first aid and emergency care, JLCER, the first aid administrative procedures, JLCEAR, Students with Diagnosed Allergies and Sensitivities Regulations, and JLCDA, Self-Care of Diabetes Using Insulin Pump Technology. Um, the protocols that were written by the nurses will be posted online, and they cover all of the procedures that were part of these policies that we are taking out of ours and turning those over to the nurses. So, is, I'm going to bundle them all in one. Is there a motion to accept the removal of the four policies, JLCE, JLCE-R, JLCEA-R, JLCDA? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I, I, just, um, I just wonder, I know we've talked about the rationale for why we're removing these mm -hmm. policies, and then they're obviously protocols through the nurse, nurse's office. Should we just kind of talk about that a little bit more, one more time? Sure. Do you want to start um, with that? I, well, actually, I was hoping that you, you could okay. um, talk about that a little bit. Um, well, part of that had to do with how quickly things move. Um, this really is a nurse's purview. They're able to review those policy, well, protocols on a regular basis, probably far more regular than the board can. And if things change, they're able to act more quickly. Um, as we have learned going through this policy, it can take sometimes months to make a policy change through the board. And this allows us to be more nimble and react more immediately for changes that come into play. Um, and again, the protocols are more thorough than the policies were, so we feel very confident in the removal of these. I, I guess the, the only thing I, I would add to that is, um, you know, they, they were no longer required policies. Mm -hmm. So we felt comfortable removing them because of the strong protocols that the nurses had in place. And this gives them the flexibility to, to make any changes as, as, you know, protocols change in terms of best practice. Um, the reason why the allergy policy was a little bit different and we ultimately decided in policy not to remove the, that and to kind of make an umbrella policy that references the protocol was in response to some significant concerns that um, several, actually many members of our community had relating to um, our students with allergies. So we thought that was a really good compromise. Um, I'll just add quickly that um, I've stayed out of the process of, of this policy generation. For those of you that don't know, I do have a first-degree family member who's uh, intimately involved in the health of our students in our schools. 
And what I'll say is that, you know, I know her history here, and I also know that some of these policies and procedures were around before we had nurses full-time in our schools and before we as a system and as a community really invested in having licensed health professionals in our schools. And so some of these practices were so our administrators and our teachers knew what to do in these situations. But now that we have professionals in all of our schools and people that are licensed to handle this, I'm very excited to see us moving forward in a responsible way so that people can be served even higher than these practices and policies allowed. I would, I would just like to say thank you for um, those who were initially opposed to um, uh, amending the policy to remain open-minded and to hear feedback and for us to work on a compromise. I feel like it, it's, a, it's a good interim um, between the concerns and, and what the nurses needed. So, so thank you for that. Agreed. Okay. Um, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Again, unanimous. 7.4, motion to accept the meeting minutes of the April 25th, 2019 meeting as presented. So moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Again, okay. unanimous. All right, here comes the big one. Um, action item is to move approval of the fiscal year 20 educational budget as presented at the school board's first reading on April 4th, 2019. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Do we have to make amendments? This is where I come in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to make an amendment to the first reading proposal, but just want to do just give a quick recap as to sort of how we got here today. Um, it, I just realized my mic wasn't on. Better. Um, so the first reading uh, was on April 4th. Um, and that passed unanimously. Um, after that, we spent several weeks, which now feels like a lifetime, um, going through what we feel was a very uh, sort of responsible and thorough and transparent review of the budget that included lots of meetings with um, our wonderful leadership council, Kate, Julie, um, the full board, and many others, uh, including the town and the community and the budget outreach sessions. Um, we made adjustments where we needed to, um, we made refinements where we needed to, um, and we're really happy to say that, uh, you know, we, we still think that the budget is representative of the needs and the priorities of the district, and we didn't uh, have to sacrifice much in getting that passed. Uh, so last night it was passed at the town council, um, and then tonight what we'll be approving um, are, are all of the amendments. And so bear with me because there are a lot of numbers to read. Um, and actually, before I get to that, um, there are two handouts available for anyone. We have copies, and we'll make them available publicly as well for anyone that might be watching. Um, so this one that's blue will show uh, sort of our original proposal, the adjustments, and then the final at the bottom. And then this second one is just an overview from FY19, changes from FY20. And you guys should all have it as well. All right. So I'm going to make a motion to move to amend the FY20 education budget expenditures approved at the school board's first reading on April 4th as follows. In the general fund operating budget, increase expenditure budget by 120620 Six dollars to support identified needs and special services in athletics. Reduce expenditure budget by $197,874 in the areas outlined in the budget process handout. So again, that's this blue one. Uh, these changes result in a net reduction to the expenditure budget of $77,248. And so the full amended general fund expenditure budget will total uh, $51,426,993. For capital improvements budget, increase expenditure budget by $219,000 to support identified needs in K-2 facilities. Reduce expenditure budget by $180,000 in areas outlined in the budget process handout. And these changes combined result in a net increase to the expenditure budget of $39,000. The total amended capital improvements expenditures budget will be $2,441,070. Uh, 
there's no recommended amendments to the adult education budget and there's no recommended amendments to the school nutrition budget from the first reading. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, oh, sorry. Nothing, I, I, I just wanted to say um, thank you for all the hard work because I know this for the Finance Committee and Julie and Kate and everybody who was involved, um, the Leadership Council and really the community, everybody. Anyway, I just want to say thank you because I know this was a lot of work um, and stress to get to this point. Um, and I'm glad that we are at this point, um, but I just wanted to acknowledge all the hard work that you guys have put into this and thank you. I'd second that. Um, the hours that everyone put in was incredible. Thank you so much for getting us to this point and for being flexible, given the fact that it was a little unexpected in how we got here. I, I would echo that. Thank you so much. Um, I would also say that I'm just really psyched that we have some really awesome new investments in this budget, and it, we didn't have to sacrifice those, and that, that speaks to everybody involved, but also to the diligence of our finance committee in terms of the work that you did with Superintendent Kuchenberger and, and Kate to get to this point. So thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge the work that the town council did um, to work with the school board to protect our investments and really see the value um, in our investments this year. Um, they were truly you know, our allies um, in this process. And I just want to reiterate what Sarah said, that we really do feel like this is a responsive and responsible budget. Um, and we're really proud to bring this forward to the community. So. All right. You ready? All those in favor? Unanimous. OK. Just, nope. Almost. Um, so to return to the main motion, which will now be to accept the general fund operating, adult education, school nutrition, and capital budgets as amended. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. okay. Yes. I do have one more thing to say. Um, as you know, uh, we have talked, we've talked to you um, from a communication standpoint about how um, we're really going to um, leave a lot of the information um, aside until the second reading has been passed. Um, so expect to see a big push. There's going to be some things in the Scarborough Leader. There's going to be a lot of stuff on social media. Um, so if you have a personal page or if you have a personal page, feel free to share any and all of those things that um, will be coming out in the next few weeks up until the budget vote. Mm -hmm. okay. Should we make our our plug for GSEA. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to vote yes on municipal question one. <laughs> okay. All, right. All those in favor? Again, unanimous. Thank you. Great. Okay, 7.6 appointments. 7.6.1. It's a motion to appoint a new interim superintendent of Scarborough Schools. Um, as you know, the board decided to open a search for an interim superintendent. The position was posted through MSMA, and we were very pleased to immediately have many applications and letters of interest. In the course of this process, we feel we have found a candidate who is the right fit to lead Scarborough for the next year, so we are happy to announce that the Scarborough Board of Education is seeking to enter into contract negotiations with Sandy Prince. Sandy has been the superintendent of RSU 14, Wyndham Raymond, for the past 16 years and will be retiring from that position as of June 30th. He has a total of 39 years of classroom and school leadership experience in various roles, including teacher, principal, special education director, curriculum planning director, and superintendent. In addition to his role as superintendent of schools at RSU 14, Sandy is currently the president of the Cumberland County Superintendent Association. I'm making a motion to appoint Sandy Prince as our new interim superintendent of Scarborough Schools, pending the completion of a negotiated contract. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Great. Again, unanimous. 7.6.2. Motion to appoint a new high school principal. 
Yes, so it is my honor tonight and pleasure to recommend the appointment of Susan J. Ketch for the position of the Scarborough High School principal. All who know Ms. Ketch will confirm that she's a passionate educational leader. I can't see you over there. <laughs> um, who advocates for all students. Ms. Ketch's inclusive whole student philosophy will serve our students, fam students, staff, and families well. Susan Ketch has been employed by the Scarborough Public School District since 1984 and it did not take long for her leadership abilities to be noticed. After three years, she was assigned to the position of lead teacher for the K-12 Fine Arts Department. In 1992, she was promoted to associate principal of Scarborough High School. Then in 1997, she took on a dual role as the alternative education director and assistant principal of Scarborough High School. Ms. Ketch has remained the assistant in the assistant principal role for over 25 years. And last year, Ms. Ketch stepped up during a contentious time in our community to take on the role of Scarborough High School principal, serving as the interim and proving to our staff, students, and families just how dedicated she is to the success of our students. Ms. Ketch was interviewed and recommended for hire to the <coughs> superintendent by the interview committee consisting of several high school teachers, a school board member, a principal, a parent, a high school student, an educational technician, and central office administrators. I have the utmost confidence that Ms. Ketch's experience, commitment, and educational excellence will provide the stability and support needed to ensure Scarborough High School continues to be an outstanding place for our students to learn and grow. The Scarborough community is fortunate to obtain a high school principal of such caliber. My recommendation is to appoint Susan J. Ketch as the high school principal pending the completion of a negotiated contract. So moved. Second. Discussion? I just have one thing to say. Um, I've, I've said before in here that uh, I was directed as a small, awkward child in a play uh, <laughs> by Sue Ketch, and she was also a prominent administrator when I was at the high school. And when I walk in the high school today, so much has changed, and I find myself wandering in the hallways trying to find that original school somewhere in there. And I'm just thrilled to know that there's a piece of history and a piece of excellence that's going forward as a leader for the high school. So I'm just so thrilled for this. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Sue for being the interim for the past year and for um, going through the process to get here and um, for the committee for coming back together and for doing the whole process and coming through um, with this recommendation and I'm really pleased that we can move forward with this. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Catch, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you'd like <laughs> to <laughs> take the podium and say a few words, that, it's all yours. Just something inspirational and <laughs> no, no expectations. <laughs> you can sing. <laughs> you, got, you got your singing tonight and they were fabulous so thank you very much it's been an incredible year um, I don't I'm just very pleased to be taking on this role um, as you saw tonight we just have such an amazing and talented and gifted student body our staff is bar none just so passionate and excellent in all that they do um, I want to thank um, not only the students and the staff, but parents in the community have been so supportive this year. I want to thank the board for giving me this opportunity. I want to thank um, the Leadership Council, who's been so supportive this year, along with central office staff, Julian, Joanne, Allison, especially, who have been mentors and leaders this year. Um, I look forward to moving forward. It should be an exciting time for Scarborough. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Fantastic. Six, six thirty-four. Seven. 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 Seven.